The survey was conducted to raise the profile of civil society, to identify the number of registered civil society organizations and what areas they specialize in. Now, the reason for our study, and we looked at the challenge that we had within the organization um, in, in making true or coming true to the, the vision that we have, was that we had a, a database that was basically a bit outdated. The, um, I think the, recent, the, the update was done in 2006. And we saw the need that the database that we had was really outdated and it had a lot of information. And on that database, we had a lot of um, CSOs that had already closed shop due to non-availability of funds and all other aspects that led to their closures. The report shows that from the 400 registered civil society organizations that were registered with NANASO dating back to 2010, the number has reduced to 2,034 organizations. One of the advantages of having such information is that we can feed this information to the regional councils because this is where all the functions of various ministries are going to be decentralized. So when the regional council has, councils have such information, they will be able to take action to know who is where, who can they subcontract, who can they assign duties to do which work. And then uh, lastly, with the exercise that happened before we compiled this report, is to find out, yes, all NANASO members are civil society doing HIV work but what kind of work under HIV? Is it prevention? Is it impact mitigation? Is it care and support? So now we know exactly <coughs> who does what. Because it's not that everybody knows which civil society is where and what are they doing. One of the report's recommendations is that civil society organizations should locate to high prevalence areas in order for them to have better impact. The report is ready for dissemination as it was officially launched today. NANASO is a network of civil society organizations working in the areas of HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis and related diseases.